to really appreciate why it's important to maintain a constant water balance within the body, it's important to revisit osmosis. So let's go ahead and remember those three scenarios with osmosis. Okay, so the first one is called hypotonic. Uh, the next one was isotonic. And the third one is hypertonic. Okay, now when we're talking about hypo, iso and hyper, we're talking about the amount of solute, okay, the thing dissolved in the water, in the solution around the tissues. Okay, so, so here's the tissue. It could be a slice of potato, it could be the brain, it could be you know, any, any tissue of the body. Okay, and so we're talking about comparing the amount of water inside and the amount of water outside. So hypotonic means that we've got low salt or low solute and high water in the solution outside of the cells. So that means inside the cells we have got high, relatively higher salt and lower water. Okay, now let's do the one on hypertonic. Hypertonic, that means it's high solute, so high salt in the solution around. So we've got high salt and low water. Now, it's opposite inside, so we've got low salt and high water. Okay, now, isotonic is the same. So it's the same water and the same salt. Okay, so now let's have a look at the net movement of water. Now remember, water moves along a concentration gradient from an area of high water to an area of low water. So where we've got high salt, it means we've got low water, so in this scenario here, hypertonic, got high water inside the cells and low water outside. So there's going to be a net movement of the water from the inside outside. So what's going to happen here is the water is going to leave this, the tissues and the tissue is going to shrivel. The cells will shrivel Okay, now, isotonic, well, there's gonna be no net movement um, because that's the same. So the cells will be remain the same, there'll be no change. Now, when we've got hypotonic, the solution on the outside of the cells is hypotonic. That means that there's lots of water and very little if any salt. Compared with inside the cell, inside the cell is high salt and low water. So what's going to happen here is the water is going to move along a concentration gradient from an area of high water to an area of low water. So there's going to be a net movement of water into the cells and the cells are going to swell. They'll swell up. Okay, now, so let's consider what that's going to do in an organism. So if the, um, the, the, if the person is dehydrated, so a really hot day, they've been sweating a lot, and they haven't been replacing the water. So there's, um, you know, in the blood, there is a reduced amount of water, decreased water in the blood and in the tissue surrounding the cells. So, in the, the blood and in the tissues around the cells, we have a situation where we've got decreased water and increased salt. So we've got a higher concentration of salt than we have water. So let's have a look, what situation is that then? We've got this, this one here, isn't it? We've got low water 
and high salt. So in that situation, when you dehydrate it, there's more water in the cells than there is outside of the cells. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a, a net movement of water outside of the cells. So the cells of the body are going to shrivel up. So that can't be really good for you either, can it? Shrivel, okay, can't be good. Is there a situation that could be worse? Well, certainly being dehydrated is, uh, you know, severely dehydrated is not going to be good for the body because the water comes out of the cells. Now, what happens if you actually drink too much? So we're talking about drinking too much water. If you drink too much water, there's going to be increased water around the cells. So that means, relatively speaking, we've got increased water, we've got decreased salt. So let's see that scenario here. That's this one here. If you drink lots and lots of water, you've got high water and low salt. So what happens this time is that water enters the cells and the cells swell. Could that be a problem? Well, it actually can. Those cells that swell could actually be, and they are, in, your, in the brain. Now, the brain, of course, is in a, a skull. So, the skull is bone, and there's no movement of that bone. So, if the, the cells of the brain swell, well, the, the brain is going to expand and it's going to push against the skull. And it's going to increase pressure. It's going to increase pressure in the brain. But the only way the pressure can be relieved is if the spinal cord and the brain stem, this is called the brain stem, and this is where, uh, this is like the life support system for the body. This is where the respiratory center of the brain, of the body is. And so if, uh, if the pressure builds up, the only way the pressure can be released is for the brain stem to be pushing through the hole at the bottom of the, the skull called the foramen magnum. It creates a massive amount of pressure on the respiratory center of the brain. So what happens is that in really severe circumstances is that uh, somebody can lapse into a coma and die from drinking too much water. So I just want to introduce you to um, two terms that we use here, medical terms, that are relevant. So if you're really dehydrated and you've got low water and high salt, we say that's hypernatremia. Now, now, you recall that the, um, the chemical formula for sodium is Na. Okay, so this is natremia. Nat comes from, that relates to sodium. Emia is the blood, <clears throat> and hyper means high. So high salt blood. When you dehydrate it, you've got high salt in your blood, and it causes the cells to shrivel. When you drink too much water, it's called hyponatremia. This can be a particular problem if you're um, sweating a lot and sweating out the salt, say so sweating out the salt, but you're just replacing your fluids with water. So drinking lots of water but sweating out salt, it can actually have low salt in your blood and the end result is that the cells swell and cause increased pressure in the brain, pushes the brain stem through the frame and magnum, and it puts pressure on the respiratory center of the brain, and uh, it could be, can be fatal. So that's why it's really important to maintain water balance.